Islanders win. Keep the Islanders win. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Coming up, it's divisional round Saturday. We've got an AFC battle on tap. Oh. The Los Angeles Chargers and the Cleveland Browns. Championships on the line here as divisional weekend in the NFL is underway. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. It's second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So a five-yard run the other way in the wrong direction, and that leads us to second and 15. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. And that is incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. To throw is Watson. Open man here, Schwartz complete. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. We're able to get the completion, but unfortunately not able to get the third down conversion there on that play. And I like how the defense approached that one. They knew where the first down marker was, and they decide whatever you want to have, you can. You're just not going to get the first down. Excellent tackling right there. The 48-yard punt, seven on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Chargers in good field position to start out. First and 10 at the 40. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And some room to work. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. I love football lingo and the evolution of it all. Nickel defense makes sense, right? Five defensive backs. But then you go to six. What are you going to call that? And they call it a double it. <laughs> a dive, which is just very simple for them. The math doesn't add up. But I know one thing. Offenses love to run against dime defenses. Typically, the bigger guys have an advantage against the smaller defensive backs when they're blocking downfield. And we saw that advantage right there. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. And go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up the third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field. Despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one by the line of scrimmage. Burt sets up to throw it. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And all the way in for a Charger touchdown. T.J. Hawkinson, 32 yards. And the Chargers are on the board first here in this division round matchup. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that makes the score 7 0. Chargers 
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Waddle going to bring this out of the end zone now. A oh, good looking return set up here. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. He will score. Touchdown. Yeah, it's resulted in more kneel downs. Not right there. Extra point by York is up and good. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And we will not see an attempt to match that return touchdown as this will be a touchback and bring it out to the 25. Charger drive about to get going. And the offense coming back out here. Plenty of energy ready to roll. Looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. You need your wide receivers as blockers. Sometimes they get a hold. The big runs are often a result of what they do on the perimeter. In this case, got caught holding, and this one will come back. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Here's Hurts to throw. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Great game. Great game. Great him into an incompletion. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Slot man moves right. Going for it with Pierce. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. 48 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's going to take this across the 50 in the Browns' territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. That's the receivers that spread the defense out. They were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. From just shy of midfield, Hurts. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive. It comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. They've created a nice sustained drive off a plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. And 
Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll get three down to the 34 yard line. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because Will has to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. <clears throat> They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. The slot man in motion right. Pierce will try to pick it up. And an excellent job of finding the opening as he's got this now all the way down to the 22. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. First and ten, it's Pierce. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. in for a Charger touchdown. Jalen Hurts, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers have taken the lead. He hit him earlier in this first quarter with his arm. Now he does it with his legs. Right now, he's one of those stat stuffers that you see on the basketball court. You know, the guy with points, rebounds, assists, steals. One with the arm, one with the legs. Let's see if he can continue this pace. And sending out the reminder that, yeah, look, I'm known for having an arm, but I can do it with the legs on occasion when I need to. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And he will be taken down here as the first quarter of play will come to an end. The Browns drive about to get started. After that last score we just saw, now 14 to 7, so a chance to march down the field here, try to tie this football game. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense. Linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Watson. That was complete to Deontay Hardy. And up to the 35. That's because he caught that wild. Of the divisional round matchup, but it's good for a first down as well. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. I don't think anyone in the building fooled right there as that one is going to blow up in their faces. Uh, he lost six there on the first down play. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So, Charles, this, a defense that hasn't made a lot of mistakes like this on the road to this playoff matchup, but that, a bad one there. Yeah, you definitely want to rattle and shake up the other quarterback, but you know you've got to do it the right way. Otherwise, that cloth's going to be on the ground. Watson, off play action. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Fred Warner. And the Chargers are going to take possession here at their own six-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, 
last thing he said as we were walking off the field want to play mistake free football well that just went out the window there with a the pick and do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that you're like oh fatal last words every time we hear that things tend to fall apart a little bit and that's what we saw there didn't get enough on that throw and it turned into an interception They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. And Pierce gets it again on second down. Good strength gets him a little extra and gets them some breathing room as he's tackled shy of the 10. And fall off the first down, one yard run with a minimal gain of two. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And that nearly intercepted. inside his own end zone. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Waddle now to return it. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Here's a handoff out of the gun. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short run there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Shot here on the ground. And he'll get four here down to the 35 yard line. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Watson on third down. That's to the right side and complete to Njoku. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. First down, they'll go to the ground attack. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10 yard line. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Quarter action, two minutes to go on divisional round weekend. Moved back to the 10, they'll try on second and goal here. Check, check, 
Watson, a little touch pass on the jet sweep. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Coming in this divisional round playoff, third and goal. Now Watson. Quick hitter here, it's complete. when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker, sometimes they work against a small well, defensive back. But when I they find it, it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Extra point by York is up and good. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. From back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Mm. to get going. There was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You gotta push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high power offenses that you face. And analytics that's too crazy. You know why that is given the opportunity. Because Buddy didn't be what he was supposed to do at all. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. the play fake. Here's Hurts sliding out of the pocket. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one. Right out of the line, it'll be third down. I'm looking at this one. My defensive line glasses on because you remember the old days when a tight end saw the linebacker covering him and thought he had a mismatch. But the way they can run nowadays, not necessarily so. They gave it a shot downfield. That one incomplete. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Throwing his hurts. Working the sideline here. Did he get the feet in? Yes, they say that he did. Nice job tapping both of them down. In the wild card win last week, he had just two catches, and now he's got his first one here. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. And Pierce gets it again on second down. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. And searching four yards here to pick up the first down. Hurts. He's airing it out for Williams. That's caught inside the 20. Four seconds left, and there's the timeout. In field goal range and a chance to tack on three before intermission. First down, Chargers.
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. Hopkins' kick is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So it's on to halftime of this AFC Divisional Round matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for corner number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. the name of the game and we're back underway with the second half of this AFC Divisional Round. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. Hey. The Charger drive about to get going. And they've been the better of the two teams through two quarters of play, much to the chagrin of this home crowd. Yeah, this score is a surprise to a lot of folks at home, although not to my dad. He predicted the visitors would win. And maybe to the folks in the stadium, but you know who is not a surprise to, partner? This team with the football. They were very confident coming in. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. And Pierce gets it again on second down. He takes this for three to the 29. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. Well, that wasn't a huge one. That's okay. They're taking a short, steady burst. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. They'll set up a throw, eluding the pressure right. Open man for him. He's got him. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. First catch for him in these playoffs. He was held without one last week, but he's got a first down on that effort. Uh, give to Pierce now on the option. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. 97 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Running left is Dillon. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On first and ten, it's Hurts. Over the middle complete. That's Williams. And he's going to get this down near the 25. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. 
Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Williams, a man in motion right. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he's in. For a Charger touchdown. Damian Pierce taking it in from the 20. And the Chargers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Hopkins with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10 point lead. Chargers 24. Browns 20. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Waddle is going to elect to not bring this out and instead his guys will begin at the 25-yard line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Second and 12. Watson. This is caught. It's Hardy. Yeah. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Is. And that's it's a more than acceptable read is. right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. On first down, Watson. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. He's got the room at the 30. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 20. Big gains in succession. Last one was over 20. This one over 30. Well, so often now we're praising tight ends for their nimbleness and how they catch the ball downfield. But occasionally we get a reminder that tight ends, they've got that tough guy aspect too. How about him catching that short one there? Shaking off tacklers and turning that into an expansive game downfield. And he is in So a net gain of one there. The Charger drive about to get going. Pretty important third quarter drive for it, and momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right of the yard. First play of the drive, let's get credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. 
The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Hurts with a little pop pass on the jet sweep. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A 10-yard pickup, but it's enough for a Charger first down. Boy, an effective play there, getting their wideouts involved in the run game. You know, they're always hoping on that type of a play that they can get to the end of the line and have a chance to turn it upfield as he did there. That means they controlled the blocking and took care of the defensive end of the outside linebacker to give him that lane. And I guess I need to clarify, I said getting their wideouts involved in the run game, but of course that was actually a pass as he popped it forward. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. One quarter remains for the right to advance to the AFC. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. In motion left comes Williams. And Pierce gets it again on second down. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a third and four. because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word, put it in bold. Here we go. They're going to look to throw. A hit as he throws there incomplete. That's a good piece of quarterback right there. Get the score from the pressure coming. It'll turn out getting sacked for the first time. Job saving yardage by throwing that one away. Here's JK Scott now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. They'll try and throw for it. It hurts. He's got his man, T.J. Hawkinson. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they wind up with a gain of 11 there on fourth down. Back to the ground with Pierce. 
And he'll take this down to the 33. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. The recipe is pretty simple. I think right there. You give your superstar the ball and continue to feed him. Yeah, you have to this one. Make sure he's touching the ball. Intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Slot man moves right. On third down, here's Pierce. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. 153 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said the defensive huddle. Guys, we've got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And a short gain here, down to the 22. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. First and ten. Watson. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. As expected, he's gone to him several times in this game, but that's the first time when it slipped from his grasp. I'll bet he goes back to him, though. He's an excellent player. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Back to throw, Watson. Fighting 
a safety valve here. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. From here, it would be a 45-yard field goal attempt, certainly in range, but they'll look for more yardage on third down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a third down, but they are in field goal range already. Shotgun snap for Watson. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. For some reason, the game does not want me to get outside. So I'm just going to get that outside guy. Charger drive about to get going as this offense takes the field against CD. Remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing the battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as Things start to get more interesting here in the second half. Someone moved. Flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that will drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. Five, first and 15. 
Good. He'll look to throw. Oh. A huge mistake late. It's intercepted. Picked up by Greg Russo. And the Bulls wow. are going to take possession of the football. We talk about making winning plays. That is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception. Huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. So two down, one to go. And this number two seed definitely looking to part. And now they sit one win away from a Super Bowl appearance. Yeah, and I know originally they were disappointed not to get the number one seed and the bye through to the divisional round. But you know what they're saying right now? Let's just keep rolling. We're in a great spot. Oh, man. And they have secured a spot in the conference championship. And now you can start to smell it at this point in the season, can't you? You really can because the focus has been one game at a time, not looking ahead. But when you get to the conference championship game and you know you're there, the Super Bowl does loom in the future.